time for another update. So, you'll notice the car is in the trailer. So, in the last video, you saw that we had issues with the bump steer. And we fixed that and took the car to the track again. My first pass, I let out at about a thousand feet just to feel the car out, you know, make sure it's not unstable or anything and um, then took it for another pass and it started slipping in high gear Not really something we're uh, looking to take on drag week so we uh, basically called our transmission guy and uh, this was a brand new transmission that we had bought because we figured hey we're taking it on drag week we need something we can rely on so we uh, took it to our trans guy tore it out of the car and we found that the reverse uh, drum was obviously slipping pretty good um, hence why it was slipping in high gear and the transmission a lot of the parts well a lot of the parts were reusable but a lot of the parts were also junk so we decided to have him build it up um, we did an intermediate shaft did the input shaft rebroached the input drum and uh, did a aluminum, uh, I believe the secondary drum. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know all the uh, <laughs> lingo for a TH400, but we basically went with the uh, billet aluminum drum. It saves like five pounds and less mass that has to accelerate means less force, less inertia, um, so less less uh, chance of things getting fouled up. So. We decided to go with that and put it back in the car, went drag racing again, and we had some success. So um, it went a 929 the first pass at 147 and then a 927 the second pass. tried to turn up the boost but uh, it it basically wouldn't uh, go any higher um, I think it was the same issue we were seeing at the dyno um, for whatever reason the closed loop on the Holly didn't want to go above like a 90% duty cycle I don't know if they I mean most solenoids don't typically make a big difference at greater than 90% but for whatever reason our four port solenoid made a huge difference so I don't know if the closed loop takes that into account but it um, basically it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, throw 
you know, higher duty cycles. Because um, what we saw on the dyno is like 90% was, um, it was like 17 pounds of boost and 100% was 25. So that's, I mean, that's a huge difference. So I kind of wanted to put heavier springs in it anyways. So threw some in the car and uh, we'll, we'll turn it up at drag week probably on the last day. But um, the good news from that test pass was no trans slipping. So that's a <laughs> pretty big deal. I mean, I could tell right away. Uh, I mean, as soon as we, we put it in the car, fired it up, got the fluid right, put it in reverse, there was no longer, you know, put it in reverse, wait, 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 wait. Ah, there's reverse. You know, now it was immediately put it in reverse, and there it is. So that that's what you want. <laughs> so um, I was pretty thrilled with that, and uh, you know that's that's a giant leap forward. Trans should be good for like 1,200 horsepower, which I'm sure will be there uh, eventually. And uh, that was that. Um, so something you might also notice is the car's a little shinier than what it was before. Uh, I want to thank Scott Kaufman. He's a neighbor of ours. He uh, loves to detail old cars. Um, something he said while uh, we were uh, hanging out and he was buffing the car was uh, that I thought was kind of neat. Um, he said <laughs> he likes he likes um, shining up old cars because. You know, you're taking something that's old and, and gross and uh, maybe not very appealing and you're making it new again. Whereas shining up a new car, you know, or, or a new car, it's never going to be as good as the day when you bought it new. So, you know, you're, you're never going to be satisfied. And there's something satisfying about an old car that's been neglected that you know, shining it up and making it look nice, but you can see, I mean, this thing looks really nice. I mean, for original paint, this thing is like a cream puff, but I mean, it's got a few nicks here and there, but that's to be expected on any car. So, also, we've started to pack for drag week, so we're going to try not to bring the kitchen sink. <laughs> But, um, you know, basics like a cordless impact and, you know, jack stands and wiring supplies and that sort of thing. So we're, we're really starting to get ready to, ready to go here. Um, street tires, you have to uh, check the car with the race tires on it because they check the uh, tire size with a go-no-go -no -go gauge. And they want to check the weight, obviously. So it has to be on the race tires. So has to be over 3,200 pounds with driver in race trim. So we're, uh, we're getting ready to go. So I'm really looking forward to it. If you, uh, if you guys are in the area and uh, at one of the tracks, you know, Cecil County uh, on Tuesday, Virginia Motorsports Park on uh, Monday and Friday, and um, I believe it's ATCO on Wednesday, and uh, MIR on Thursday, if you're in the area and you see the car, you can feel free to come up and say hello. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, um, getting the car going. But notice I got my sloppy mechanic sticker and uh, race we participate in, just send it and then the uh, guy that helped us out with the cam bearings and uh, um, that stuff, you know, looked the engine over, made sure it wasn't uh, garbage. That's his business, Snyder, Snyder Performance. If you guys need any engine work, I, I think he's uh, pretty booked up, but <laughs> um, I don't know if he's accepting new business, but um, he does a really good job. And uh, all right, I think I'm going to cut it off there. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's gonna be a gonna be a fun trip. Catch you guys.